That's so quiet. <laughs> I'm just telling you that it's it's definitely quiet. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Hey, footballers. Hey, What's going hey, on? Hi. How you doing? Pretty good. Oh, was, pretty that, good. was that hello to us? Yeah, it sounded like he was saying hello to us. So I greeted him back with my customary, hi. That's your customary. Yeah, when I see people that well, I... Well, I mean, people, we, we know. You say, oh, there's Jason. He says... He's the guy who says hi. 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 Yeah, as opposed to hello or greetings, salutations. How are you today? Or, sup. Sup, dude. <laughs> Point break? Is <laughs> that point break? <laughs> hey, brah. Hey, brah. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. It is Thursday, January 7th, 2016, and we are the Fantasy Footballers. We're back again with another action-packed episode. Really, this episode is all about the footies. Oh, it's a special episode. Very special. No, these are not little things you put on your feet to stay warm. These are the 2015 Fantasy Football awards that we are giving out that you decided the outcome we did not i immediately regret not wearing a tuxedo oh man immediately up. that is a horrible oversight we have 15 is that correct 15 categories that were on the ballot including sure. performance of the year we have the fantasy reapers man of the year <laughs> we have our garbage man of the year we have performances at every position. We got the best nickname of the year. I think very that excited. One. Very excited that was for a, that one. That was a close some, race. I was going to say, some of these were very close. Some of them not so much, which you know, just shows that there were certain players that were a cut above. And so we will be doing that shortly. I just want to make sure we get into a little bit of news and we let you know what else is going on here at Foot Clan headquarters. And let's lead off with that. We have the playoff challenge. Yeah. Yes. And this was kind of neat because on NFL.com, if you've not played the playoff challenge, I'll let Jason explain kind of the ins and outs. But there are groups of people that play together. And I believe we were really close to the top. Yeah, we're like the fifth largest. Behind like the NFLs. Yeah. And Rich ESPNs. Yeah, the Rich Eisen show and ESPNs. Yeah. And then there's and then there's our league that you are a part of. So we will be tweeting out that link again. You can you could just go to the NFLnetwork.com, go to the playoff challenge. It's a fun. Basically, here's what the game is. It's fantasy football for the playoffs. I'm guessing that you will enjoy it because you love fantasy football as we We're do. Just under a thousand people. Just under so a thousand. We tweeted it twice. And I I'll just say this real quick. You can go to the NFL playoff challenge, just look for the group, the fantasy footballers. Or you can go to bitly.com slash foot challenge. There you go. So, Jason, go ahead and explain what it is. So, here's how the game works for the playoffs. You set your lineup. There's a quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, tight end, defense, kicker. And you get points, just like in fantasy football. Now, here's the real catch and the strategy changer, is that through the playoffs, you will get a multiplier of your points for players who play the following week. So, essentially... The, if, if you give an not, example, if you don't change your roster, right? If you played him the last week, so let's say you pick Kirk Cousins for your quarterback, and he does great in Week One, and he scores you a lot of points, but he loses that game. You get those points, and that's great. But next week, you're going to need to change that quarterback, and you're going to be at the beginning, and you're going to be at that beginning. Wise. And so the next week, when you pick uh, Aaron Rodgers because he was so great that last week, he goes out. And you're going to get one, you know. Point for point, one what X. he's doing, one X. But if Kirk Cousins won that game and you start him the next week, then you get two times the points for huh? everything. Two, two, <laughs> two times, two <laughs> times, one. Uh, so, so there's a lot of strategy there, and I think. <laughs> Hold on, he's carrying this one on for a while. <laughs> All right, so here's Three. one of the strat. Oh my goodness, here's one of the strategic uh, facets is bye week players, right? Clearly. If you pick a guy that's going to get the, to the Super Bowl, you're going to get a lot of multipliers up to four times. You can pick the guys that are on by in week one, and they will start 
that next week giving you a times two multiplier. So I picked Carson Palmer in my personal league, and that means that when he plays whoever he plays the following week, I will get two times his points, but I get nothing this week from any position. Yes. So, so, and if it's not, if that's not clear enough, it's very obvious on the site. They yeah. explain it to you. I will say this: if you end up winning the group, we'll send you some fun stuff. Yes. We'll send you a trophy. We'll send you some footballers gear. Love it. So that'll be the reward for the victor. Obviously, we'll probably win. Yeah, and we'll, we'll send it here. to ourselves. I, I actually go to the mailbox and mail it though, because I like getting packages. <laughs> so, all right. So, hey, if you want to check us out on Twitter, we're at the FF Ballers. Check us out on the web, thefantasyfootballers.com. Some quick housekeeping things with that. We're going to continue to upgrade the website all through the offseason, getting ready for next year, including optimizing the way our rankings display so you can get them on mobile. We've heard that feedback a lot this year about people not being able to read them on mobile as well as they can online. And so we'll take care of that this offseason, and we'll be upgrading, adding new things, new stuff for Foot Clan members. And um, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's, it's going to be the best. It's going to be the best. All right, let's let's uh, let's talk <laughs> about some news. News and notes from around the league. Dude, that's very quiet. It is quiet. The oh. volume is 100% up. Well, well you know, it's... It, how it's, does that work? Maybe, is it, is it uh, Did a channel over here get knocked down for the, uh, uh, the sound effect channel? Maybe. We'll have to push on. Yeah. Isn't this... Uh, a whole year, we don't have any issues with drops. Now I'm forgetting drops. It's, it's this after lunch thing, it's, dude. It's Y216. No, All right, well, I don't think so. Y2K16? No, it has to make sense for it to be to be that. Um, all right, so let's go. Andy Dalton. He is Remember not him? going to play. Yeah, he's not, he's not playing. Got his cast removed, but he is not playing this week, so it will be the A.J. McCarron show. Better or worse for the Cincinnati Bengals? That's such a stupid question. Wait, because, what? <laughs> no, I actually think it's better. I genuinely do, and I, I think that's silly, but the narrative— You are a crazy person. I know I'm— I, Nobody would doubt you on that. We all know I'm a crazy person. But the narrative is no longer, will Andy Dalton implode? Will, you know, now it's like the, that narrative, I haven't heard that this week. From They're a gonna distraction? Have to, yeah, from a distraction standpoint, from a nervous standpoint. Now it's just, let's control the clock. We're at home. There's no D-Will, probably. There's no Le'Veon Bell. And I think... Martavis Bryant's been a little bit shaky. Yeah. so <laughs> To say the least. Well, he, yeah. w he was only on the field like 17 snaps That's, last game. That qualifies as shaky <laughs> for me. I mean, benched well, it was the illness. week before he was benched sometime. There were issues this yeah, past he was, week. He was wink, wink. Yeah, he was as ill as... Uh, it's Tom Coffin's resignation. <laughs> oh. All right, hey, what else hey Martavis, you got a cold. What are you talking about? <laughs> I All feel right. great, coach. So uh, Tyrod Taylor seems like he'll be the quarterback. Next year seems like a prove-it year for Rex Ryan, Buffalo Bills, uh, GM, uh, and then Tyrod Taylor. So Taylor is going to be given the opportunity. So dynasty implications is why we mentioned that. Yep. And I also just – I think it's worth mentioning because it's ridiculous. I – why did I don't think Tyrod Taylor needs a chance to prove it? I think Tyrod Taylor has proven that he can be a good quarterback in the league. It, That's it, what a lot of people's opinion is. So I that just, he's proven it. I think it's a silly thing. Silly. Okay. D'Angelo Williams, we mentioned it. Outside chance, small one to play in the game. I don't think he'll play. He's still in a boot today. Uh, he's not going to play. In so this playoff game. challenge wise, probably not a good. I had him in. I took him out. There you go. In the shocker, I mean, I, is there some sort of button I can push to show you how shocked I was? Oh, <laughs> you're talking about Chuck Pagano? I mean, Chuck Pagano, four-year extension, Ryan Grigson, three-year extension. He had one year left. Essentially, they are now tied together for four more years of four entertainment. Four more years. <laughs> four more years. They are also going to be featured um, in a sitcom for, yeah. these next, for the next four years. The odd years. couple? <laughs> yeah, the odd couple. Um, uh, I think keeping Pagano was actually a decent move on their part. He's had a good record, but keeping their GM is a joke. He's made one good pick in the last several years, and that was Andrew. Yeah, but what about, <laughs> what about that T. Rich trade? Oh, that's that's true. He did get T. Rich for a one. It's just kind of it was a surprise. <laughs> I will say, I I believed that Sean Payton would stay where he's staying, and that was the news that broke today. He's staying in New Orleans, and uh, it looks like. You know, Chuck Pagano, he has the opportunity to have a big bounce back. Very similar situation to Jason Garrett in Dallas, where next next year I expect, I predict 
both teams to win their divisions next year. I'm not, I don't have any issues saying that. I think both teams will win their division when they get the quarterbacks back in place. I, hopefully, Gregson will focus on the defense a little bit, and they'll be or okay. the offensive line. Yeah, correct. Weaknesses. Focus on weaknesses, man. How, not another wide receiver. If they draft a wide receiver in the first round, hey, he's got a three-year contract locked up. That would be just, just the best. In very exciting news for me, as a you know, as a Philip Rivers uh, fan and that offense, if. Uh, there, there are rumors that Ken Wisenhunt will end up back in San Diego as the offensive coordinator. He's already worked very well there with Phillip Rivers. And him and Mike McCoy being there, I think that just means really good things. You talk about on the last show, Jason, you said change. Sometimes we overestimate or underestimate situations. If this change happens, at least we have a little bit of a track record with Wisenhunt as an offensive coordinator. He seems much more equipped to be play calling and focusing on the quarterback and the offense than he does to be a head coach. Yeah, this it's not a question uh, of what's it going to be. It's just look back. You already knew what it was going to be. Kind of like uh, when D'Angelo Williams came in relief of Le'Veon Bell. It wasn't wh- how's he going to perform? We, we already knew. We had already seen it once. Exactly. So uh, a few more bits of news before we get to the footies. We've got Marshawn Lynch. Do you guys think he plays? I think he does. He plays and he's in my playoff challenge. I think he plays. He is in your playoff challenge. He is my guy. Jeremy Macklin returned to practice on Wednesday. He should be good to go. Uh, what else do we have? We have Sean Payton remaining there, yep. which is great for I, – I think that means Breeze is going to be there and they're going to be – you know, they flash this year. If they can just fix the defense a little bit. <laughs> if That's a big if, my friend. I know, I know, but there were games. I mean, they had a, uh, a decent back half of the year. Well, they made a strong fix in getting rid of their defensive coordinator halfway through the year. That, that helped. And then, kind of, yeah. Big news. Yeah, this this is the last piece. Last piece of big news. Calvin Johnson. Rumors that he may retire. Confirmed by him that he's contemplating retirement. We talked about it a little bit right before we went on the air here. Mike thought might be maybe it's a little bit of a leverage ploy, which I I don't. I think you could be right because the the what's his situation? So so his his cap number is humongous. It's over twenty million dollars. It's it's something that the team cannot absorb. I mean, you, you have to make moves to improve the team and investing that kind of a salary hit for Calvin Johnson is just not a wise thing for your team as a whole. But to me, this is Calvin Johnson uh, saying, go go ahead, ask me to take a pay cut because you already have my answer. And the answer is no. The answer so, is farewell. Yeah. and If you cut me, essentially. If you ask for a, a pay cut. Yeah. So if you want me to take less money, uh, either... I'm saying I'm not going to play because he, he will do it or it's just, it becomes a really bad look for your organization. You have a superstar elite wide receiver who still has some time left, who's got to be loved. I mean, I'm not up in Detroit, so I don't know the Calvin Johnson love. I imagine it's, it's much- very similar to Larry Fitzgerald here and the public uh, uh, scrutiny of your organization. If uh, feeling like you forced Calvin Johnson into retirement would not be a good look for uh, for your fan base. I just asked you last show about Matthew Stafford next year, and one of the things you said was, if Calvin's back, I like his situation with Jim Bob Cooter, 6-2 and two back half of the year, really good touchdown to interception ratio. Calvin now is up in the air. Yeah. And a lot of if he really is considering retirement, a lot of these guys, I'm surprised they do it right at the end of the year. We know he's just been through another beat-up, injury-plagued year, three in a row where he's kind of been – you know, he's worn down. He is worn down. He's 31, I believe, or will be. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not he's not ancient. He can come out and be be great. We've seen that in certain games this year. But it's no longer the Calvin Johnson that gives you 16 consecutive, 15 consecutive huge performances. It's, okay, a couple big games, and then, oh, no, is he going to be a decoy for a couple games? Calvin Johnson is 30, but he will turn 31 in September. All right. So are we ready? Do we want to hit it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Well, let's just cue the theme music. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Welcome, everybody, <laughs> to the footies <laughs> for 2015. We're your hosts, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore. I'm Mike, the fantasy hit man, right? And we are bringing you the best performances of the year. As voted by you, the people! 
Can we just listen to the music now? Yeah, now, now it's just a time to listen to the music. <laughs> I'm going to keep that going in the background a little bit. All right, we have 15 categories. We put it online. We said go. Vote. Tell us who the very best players were this season. And uh, we've got the results. That's the re- all there is to it. The results are in. Now, do we have uh, – we don't have – okay, okay. We're going to go through the nominations oh, the brass, as well. The brass is coming in. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Isn't this just finish. perfect? <laughs> Oh, oh, man. It's over. Oh, I started it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first category that I want to uh, bring to your attention, you guys can read the nominees. Wh- who were the nominees for performance of the year? This is the single week performance that was the very most impressive one of the season. And again, we told everybody out there to consider all things impact to your fantasy team when they happened, that type of thing. All so, of those things. For performance of the year, the nominees were Antonio Brown in week 15, who put up a stat line of 16, 189 yards and two touchdowns against Denver. That was pretty good. David Johnson in week 15 with 29 carries for 187 and three touchdowns. You had Drew Brees' monster gargantuan best quarterback week of the year in week eight with seven touchdowns. And 500 yards. <laughs> oh, yeah. I missed. I, I forgot about oh, the dear Those are Kellen Moore numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Rawls was a big performer in week 11 with 30 carries, 209 yards, as well as a touchdown through the air. And finally, you have Cam Newton in week 15, playoff week, where he put up 340 yards and five touchdowns. Oh, and he also added 100 yards on the ground oof oof those are, some, those are some big performances couple observations one three of the five nominated performances were from week 15 when it kind of mattered yeah but the people won championships because of those three guys all right let's see who the let's, winner is let's open up the I envelope don't know if you can hear this but i'm this is a drum roll the winner was and the winner and is, is david johnson excuse me i'm sorry the winner is david johnson yeah, week he was 15, running that category. 29 for 187, Oof. three touchdowns. Second place was the Drew Brees seven touchdown game. And coming in third was Cam Newton's big week 15 performance. Do you guys agree with the the vote? Yeah, uh, I've got to uh I gotta agree with the voters on this one. David Johnson from the running back position to give you that performance in your semifinals. Uh it, clutch. Yeah, that it, it doesn't get much better than that. One of the things about the Rawls performance, it was great, but not many people would have thought to play him that week. It was a very late call and a late choice there. So uh, David Johnson takes the very first one. Our first our first footy, footy of the goes year. to yeah. David Johnson. All right, guys, let's get to numbers. I think you numbers. Need, yeah, Andy soon. has to run this yeah, one. Yeah, this, this one's all about you, Andy. All right, the nominees for the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year, <laughs> which... Uh, in case you wonder what that is, it's the play. Which player's painful injury hurt fantasy owners the most this season? The nominees are Arian Foster with an Achilles twice <laughs> and a groin. Yes, a- uh, Le'Veon Bell with a torn MCL. Jamal Charles with a torn ACL. Marshawn Lynch. I believe he had a sports hernia. Is that what happened? That to is him? correct. Okay. Andrew Luck, a lacerated kidney, <laughs> and overall sucking. Uh, and Des Bryant with a Jones fracture to his foot. And the winner of the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year was Le'Veon Bell. Oh, Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell takes it. He hurt fantasy owners in a big way. He missed the beginning of the year, right? Yeah, he had the two-game the suspension. Two-game suspension. This one was not very close. All right, no. Le'Veon Bell won by more than twice the margin, coming in very close. Actually, right now, they're about tied. Jamal Charles and Arian Foster are tied for second place. Yeah, the the reason Le'Veon Bell runs away with this isn't because of how devastating his injury was, but because of how good he was when he was not injured. The clear-cut best running back in the league. If you're in a PPR, get out of it. He was going to win a bunch of people a league, and then he left. But hopefully you had his handcuff. D'Angelo Williams has been... Very good in replacement. And so the next category for the 2015 footies, garbage man of the year. 
I'm gonna need the drop. Oh, the garbage man can. This award goes to the fantasy player who did the most damage when it mattered the least. <laughs> <laughs> and the nominees: Blake Bortles, Brandon Cooks, Philip Rivers, Danny Woodhead, and Jordan Matthews. The winner of the 2015 with 43% of the vote garbage man of the year we all know it's Jordan Matthews <laughs> the ultimate garbage man the sanitation engineer himself uh, Jordan with, Matthews did work when it mattered the, the game least. after the game Jordan Matthews although there was it was a little bit close with Blake Bortles in second place. There oh, was man. some recency bias. Jordan Matthews did a lot of garbage work at the end of the year. Blake Bortles did a consistent amount. Yeah, throughout the entire year, Blake Bortles was great at taking out that trash. But Danny it, Woodhead was third. Yes, but that, that was just from, I think, one amazing performance all in the fourth quarter especially. But Jordan Matthews, I think the reason he was such a good garbage time player was he helped get his team to garbage time. <laughs> when when the plays mattered, he couldn't catch the ball. But later in the game, when it's like, oh, the game's out of reach. It doesn't matter if I catch this ball. It was easier to catch for him. So, so he not only removed the garbage, <laughs> yes. he was the creator. Yeah. He was. So he, he deserves this. The true garbage man. He deserves this footy. Now listen, Jordan Matthews, Danny Woodhead, Phillip Rivers, Brandon Cooks, Blake Bortles, what do they got in common? If you want to be considered for the Garbage Man of the Year, what do you need? You need a bad team. You need a bad team. You need to be on a losing team because all of those guys late in the game. Well, speaking of bad, Ooh. we might want to shift to our next Oof. stinky award. The next footy? It is the Poopiest Pants Award. <laughs> Despite high expectations, this player let fantasy <laughs> Pooped in his big boy pants. These are the guys that let you down despite high expectations, and the nominees are Randall Cobb, Eddie Lacy, C.J. Anderson, DeMarco Murray, and Jeremy Hill. There's a lot of poop in those pants. A lot of poop in those pants, but one of those pants is larger than all the other pants. And it was able to fill up with so much poop that he oh. ran away with the award. Oh. It wasn't close. Eddie Lacy. Eddie Lacy. You <sighs> pooped in your big boy pants and you crapped all over fantasy teams for Eddie, everyone. Eddie over 50% of the vote. Yeah, it was. It, I don't blame the voters on this one at all. Eddie Lacy, we all had the highest of hopes, a consensus. Top five pick. He was number one. Uh, num no, number two. He was number two on my big board. And uh, he definitely went number two. <laughs> <laughs> Give so me Le'Veon Bell. I would so much <laughs> rather have a guy I was just about that to ask gets you. injured and now I got to replace him. You did this over and over, right? Arian Foster goes down. Deion Dion Lewis, Lewis goes Thomas down. Thomas Rawls. And so you f you go, I've got to make a move. I've got to replace him. But Eddie Lacy did the worst thing he could, which is every now and then. He hope. tantalizes you yeah, with his pass. Like, oh, I hope. had a great game on your bench. I was, Put me in. I was just about to ask you because Arian Foster was my number one on my big board before the year. Eddie Lacy was near the top of yours. Which situation would you rather have been in? If you were an owner that drafted Arian Foster, you finished better than if you drafted Well, it had to be Lacey. Foster. I mean, I, where I could, I drafted Foster in like the fifth or sixth round. I actually did not have any Eddie Lacy on my team, seems because I didn't have a top five pick anywhere. Number two was DeMarco Murray, which I completely understand. Yeah. I'm surprised it's not even closer because DeMarco's expectations were H asinine. Humongous. Yeah. And then third was C.J. Anderson, and he's actually a playoff challenge guy for me. Because yeah, I think C.J. Anderson's starting to come into form. He has bounced back. It, it The more you watch of Anderson and the opportunity, the more it looks like it really was the ankle injury and the the offense with with uh, Manning. The the way it was being run, it just it didn't fit with his run style. I, I might be looking into this too much, but it kind of seems like a lot of these guys are guys that are bigger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. C.J. Yeah, Anderson. Randall Cobb. No, but I did make but, some comments yeah, about Cobb Randall earlier Cobb in the year. looked bigger this year. C.J. Anderson came oh, into training camp overweight. Even Jeremy Eddie Hill's Lacey. a bigger back. It's yeah. just interesting that they're all power guys. They're all power guys. When yeah. you eat 
a diet heavy in fat and you get fiber. The poops. You get, <laughs> All right. You... All right. The next footy <clears throat> is the Waiver Wire Wonder Award, which undrafted Waiver Wire stud was the best signing of the 2015 season. We had a number of nominees in this category. I'll go through them quickly. It's tough. Yeah, there's a lot. There are D'Angelo Williams, Thomas Rawls, Tim Hightower, Jordan Reed, David Johnson, Charkandrick West, Chris Johnson, and Blake Bortles. And so the votes are in. And the winner of the Waiver Wire Wonder footy is D'Angelo Williams. Congratulations, D'Angelo Williams. Any words from D'Angelo? He was a monster. Just a complete monster. It was, and uh, I dare say, a very large surprise, especially the first two weeks uh, when I don't think... He was think the number one running back after the first two weeks. There was probably a few people out there who recommended, yeah, you know, grab D'Angelo Williams and play him, but it's it seemed like a, a fool's errand if you were going to replace Le'Veon Bell, if you took him in the first. You know, I need a guy for the first couple of weeks. There was no way I was playing D'Angelo Williams that first week. And not even the second week, uh, but he was a monster. He fit right into the offense, and then when Bell went down, he he came in, 200 carries, 907 yards, 11 touchdowns, 40 catches, 40 catches for 367 yards. Monster year. He was the number four back on the entirety of the monster. year. He had 38% of the vote. Coming in second with 22% was David Johnson. Third was Jordan Reed with 16% of the vote, and fourth was Blake Bortles with 10%. And that's such an important category. The waiver wire wonder that's is, how you win. is generally a guy that wins a lot of championships. Last year, last year it was Justin Forsett, that gold off the waiver wire. Every year we want to know who gets this award. So, D. Will, congratulations. Congratulations. And, I mean, Hightower really should have gotten a little bit more love, I think, just because of the clutchness. It, it's a... He didn't have a full body of work, which I completely understand. But I saw a uh, a nug nugget, a factoid. Tim Hightower, the most common player among championship teams. Yes. Wow, wow! And, that, and last year that sense. was Odell Beckham Jr. Right. And so Tim Hightower this year, a guy who hadn't taken a carry since 2011, comes in and makes that kind of a fantasy impact. It it made me uh, just laugh a little bit to look at the top running backs and see D'Angelo Williams and Tim Hightower <laughs> right. and these names of guys that you just never – you couldn't have in a million years. You could have thrown darts at a wall all day, and you never would have landed on those guys, especially nope. Tim Hightower. So so we're going to take the footies into the positional categories. Yes, we are. So we'll start with the fantasy wide receiver of the year, and we asked the voters factor in draft position, big game performances, and impact to your fantasy football team and the nominees for fantasy wide receiver of the year were Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, Odell Beckham Jr., Doug Baldwin, Allen Robinson, DeAndre Hopkins, and rounding out the category, Brandon Marshall. And I'm going to have to take this over from you. Did we have a late? Because late vote has what? changed the outcome of this. What? We have. The, I, I'm this, looking at the live wait, vote. This, and this is, is unprecedented. Wait, where's. <laughs> This is on. This is like. It, wait, is the winner Columbia? This this is Steve Harvey. <laughs> we are in Steve Harvey territory right here. Unfortunately, I well, I'm looking at the actual uh, up to date live stats, and then I I look back to our doc, and it is a different name. Wow. And so and I'm top? gonna need at, at number one. Oh my goodness. And the winner of the footy. I don't even know. I'm excited. Wide receiver of the year, with 26 percent of the vote. Well, very close. Second so, place was 24% of the vote. <sighs> Antonio Brown. Oh, Antonio oh, oh, Brown. Oh, oh. Antonio Brown came back late. Number two, the very close second, is Allen Robinson. I am, I am in complete Are you in and shock? utter shock right now. <laughs> Allen Robinson was running away with this in the beginning. I was I, The first 500 votes that came in, it was like, okay, well, that one's clearly going to Allen the Robinson. The word Allen was... Right at the front of my mouth I before I got it. flagged down. I had to grab Incredible. it. Incredible. Well, I he will has a, tell you this. A 30 vote lead. And he, he, he won. I Antonio Brown lead. deserves it. And he is, uh, you know, look, he might not have been as value based a pick as Allen Robinson, but Antonio Brown has shown 
that he is the best wide receiver in the league. Maybe the Ra- best fantasy player in the league. Yeah, and, and we've talked about pro- probably too early and too much about the fact that he would be a worthy never, number never one pick next year. But Antonio Brown, he is an absolute monster. Congratulations, An- Antonio. And I- uh, third place was Brandon Marshall with 16% of the vote, DeAndre Hopkins, and then Julio Jones. So, yes, big surprise there. <laughs> Apparently, the second best wide receiver year of all time in Julio Jones was only best. That's only <laughs> good enough fifth. for fifth. Well, Maybe because some people who owned him had a similar opinion as I did, that he which is the most you. ridiculous opinion of all. But he didn't help me. Well, he a didn't bunch. score enough touchdowns. I mean, he <laughs> he had the yards, was. but he didn't get the touchdowns. Look, Antonio Brown won oh. weeks, and he won them consistently. Julio Jones <laughs> from weeks four through the second to last week of the year, had like two touchdowns. So he came out and he gave you uh, 10 to 20 points, which you loved. It's fine. He didn't win your week. Antonio Brown came out and some of the performances oh that he put up. Against Denver? I mean, that was – we didn't speak yeah, on this, but the, the individual performance of the year, I actually voted for that Antonio Brown in week 15 against Denver. Look, against if Julio that had won people more leagues – he would have won that category. There you go. Well, let's so, find out who won people leagues at the running back position. The fantasy running back of the year, factoring in all those things, the nominees were Devonta Freeman, Adrian Peterson, old man strength, Doug Martin, <laughs> bounce back, D'Angelo Williams, waiver wire, gold, old man strength, and Todd Gurley, rookie sensation. And the winner, when factoring in where they drafted impact total performances is Devonte Freeman. Mr. Besmirched name himself <laughs> was the fantasy running back of the year. Just hearing it roll off your lips he brings me joy. He was uh. not that involved in weeks one and two and finished the year as the number one running back who you could probably find on waivers might have been drafted, but was not expected to do much. I think he was he was drafted in a good amount of leagues. What was he held on to? Uh, a lot of the, people dropped him after week one the, and two. Here's the first two weeks of Devonta Freeman running the ball. 10 for 18, 12 for 25. And, I, I'm and just, Mike was cackling in the corner of the yeah, studio. I am happy that you are bringing these back up. Just further be, besmirching his name so that so that people be, can be confident <laughs> to keep him for next year. He ran away with this one, 44% of the vote. Very close second place. D'Angelo Williams actually took second place just above Adrian Peterson. Both had 18% of the vote. And then Gurley and Doug Martin, all guys that had great years, helped you in different ways. Freeman certainly took teams from mediocre to Champions. dominant for a, a big portion of the of the year. So, all right, let's move on to the fantasy tight end of the year, the fantasy tight end of the year footy award. The nominees were Tyler Eifert, Rob Gronkowski, Jordan Reed, Maximum Barnage himself, Gary Barnage, and Greg Olson, all guys with incredible years. And the winner of the footy for fantasy tight end of the year Jordan Reed. Hey. Rule 86. Hey. Rule 86 running away with it. 42% of the vote. Gronkowski came in second. Eifert and then Barnage. Heck of a year for Jordan Reed. A guy who, when you followed the rule, which is if Jordan Reed is healthy, you play him. He was another guy that took teams from good to great, from great to championship, and carried teams. Yeah, absolutely. For, Especially for, clutch in the playoffs. For Rob Gronkowski to not win the award for the best fantasy tight end, it takes a performance like a guy who goes undrafted, finishing right behind Rob, Gronk- Rob Gronkowski. And Jordan Reed was the number two tight end in, in many formats off of waivers and was consistent and did it every time he played. I mean, Jordan Reed, you, Mike, I believe might even be keeping Jordan Reed in our league of record. Yeah, that, he has shown that the uh, that was my point that I was going to talk about. Where Jordan Reed has, uh, when he came into the league, it was this guy is very interesting. Let's see what he can do. 
Uh, a couple flashes here and there, but mostly hurt. Same thing last year. We were we thought, okay, well, Reed, this is going to be the year. Hurt. This year, training camp gets hurt, and we don't know how long he's going to be out. And then his – so we actually liked his replacement, Niles Paul. Niles Paul. See ya. Out for the year. And then Jordan Reed happened to be ready to play for opening day and has just turned into a guy that is going to be worth the risk. You, ha- you have to have this guy on your team. He's, it's no longer, oh, he gets hurt all the time. I don't, want, like, I don't care that he gets hurt all the time because if the chance that he plays every game, I have an elite, elite level tight end, 20 point in our league of record, 23 points behind Rob Gronkowski. And that was so Gronk also missed a game. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know who else has been somewhat injury prone? Gronk. Rob Gronkowski. But it doesn't matter because he's so good that you take that risk. And yeah, so Jordan think- Reed could he still has to prove it for more time than he has, but he could be taking that leap into that upper yes. echelon category. Yep. And the the thing is, is this winner, Jordan Reed winning by more than double the votes of Rob Gronkowski shows again a player that was on teams that won games. You know, a, a difference-making type of player like Tim Hightower, like you mentioned before. So, all right, that does it for the tight end. So the fantasy quarterback of the year, when factoring everything we've asked the voters to think about, the nominees, fantasy quarterback of the year, Tom Brady, Cam Newton, Carson Palmer, Blake Bortles, Russell Wilson. Who's Russell, that? Who is that? Wilson. Russell Wilson. <laughs> and Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. He still made his way onto the ballot because he was that good. He deserved. He deserved to absolutely, be on the ballot. Absolutely. Absolutely deserved to be nominated. And the winner for fantasy quarterback of the year. No shockers here. Cam Newton. Cam absolutely. Newton. Oh, and we are dabbing in the studio. There is by no I mean, Cam Newton, fantasy player, or the highest fantasy score of the year. So there is absolutely no question. Ran about away with this, this one. Yeah. More than double the second place guy who was Carson Palmer had a great year. Blake Bortles finished third. Andy Dalton even got a few votes down at the bottom, but Cam Newton with 53% of the vote. And what's amazing about this list, uh, who would be the highest drafted guy of the, of last year? Who was, was it Russell Wilson? Yeah. Yes. Russell Wilson would have been the highest drafted of this Followed list. Followed by probably Carson Palmer. No, no, Cam, no, Cam Newton, Newton would have been. New, people still drafted Newton in about the eighth. Yeah. They did, but but when you look at the list, I think the point you're making is your your top your top quarterbacks that you came into this year drafting aren't even a part of this list, and this was a pretty wide list. Well, now let's get to the list. I like this one that everyone cares the most about. It was, I believe, the most diverse group of voting. There was no runaway winner here. There were close seconds, close thirds. And everyone got a vote. It is for the nickname <laughs> of the year. Very excited. Which nickname does the Foot Clan enjoy the best? Here are your nominees. These wonderful nicknames. You have Betty Crockett Gilmore. <laughs> You've got Marty <laughs> McBride for Martavis Bryant. And, of course, the Big Salad, mm-hmm. one of Mike's personal favorites. Sean Drone. Sean Drone. Mm-hmm. Rule 86. Uh, the aforementioned Jordan Reed. You've got Maximum Barnage, also at the tight end position. Maybe my favorite, Guns Mahoney. <laughs> Guns Mahoney. Who's who's Guns Mahoney, Jason? Guns Mahoney is Guns Mahoney. That's no, Dan Campbell. <laughs> okay. Peach Cobbler. You got you That's got Peach Cobbler out there for. Uh, man, we had a lot of nicknames. Pete this Carroll. Week. Pete Carroll. Uh, for Pete Carroll. Two the, coaches have nicknames. That's the good. Depth. Well, we also had Coobs. That's true. So, you know, he just That's, didn't make that it That wasn't a big stretch. No. Uh, Coob, the, Kubiak. <laughs> Coobs. Let's do Coobs. <laughs> yeah. You know, we didn't put David Johnson. Uh, That's yeah. not a nickname. Here because it's not a nickname. No. He's just singing it. Same with Russell Wilson. <laughs> That's uh, true. Also nominees, the depth chart assassin, Fred Jackson himself, friend of the show, and Dirty Cake. Also, Sammy Biscuits. We... We left we're him giving, We're giving him an honorable mention. All yeah, of these guys biscuits. got great votes. I'm going to take you back from third place on. At oh, third, I like that. At third I place. Like the third place winner was Guns Mahoney. People this, enjoyed Guns I was Mahoney. surprised. <laughs> this was a shocker. A complete shocker to me. 
uh, of as far as nicknames go, Guns Mahoney was a complete throwaway. Oh, like, no, you're it was, wrong, was, sir. I, I, no, I no, think no. it all came from when you <laughs> from when, when I you correct. were like, when you were like Dan Campbell. Because That's who you, we're talking about. Three or four times in a row, you just referred to him very casually as Guns. Yeah, Guns, just, when Guns Mahoney's making his decision with Lamar Miller in the backfield <laughs> and Guns Mahoney tells Ryan Tannehill to, and I'm like, That's his, his name's Dan Campbell. I think if you look on his birth certificate, it's Guns Mahoney. In second <laughs> place, second place is Mike's favorite, the big salad, yeah. Sean Drone. Shout out great, to the Seinfeld lovers out there. Great nickname. Oh, but the first place is the name. The name that won, the name that was a rule, Rule 86, Yay! Jordan Reed, you are the nickname of the year. Congratulations, Jordan. And I, I like this one. Uh, I'm sure that his performance of winning championship, that, that factors in. That gives you a... Uh, Is that good? Gives you some love and attachment to a nickname and a player. So I like, th- I like this one. I'm with the voters. Rule 86. All right. Rule 86 takes the footy for nickname of the year. And now we move on to the breakout player of the year. Which player was fantasy football's breakout player of the season? A lot of great options. A lot of good options. We put it to a vote. We let you guys go and vote on the breakout player of the year. The nominees were DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Freeman, Allen Robinson, Tyler Eifert, Blake Bortles, Jordan Reed, Latavius Murray, and Doug Baldwin. Great options. And the winner of the breakout player of the year. Are you sure? Have you double-checked this one? I got it right in front of me. Allen Robinson. Yeah. Allen Robinson takes the footy for breakout player of the year. Well-deserved. An incredible season from Allen Robinson. He had 37% of the vote. Devontae Freeman, 23% of the vote. And DeAndre Hopkins with 12%. So Allen Robinson r- ran away with this. Allen Robinson did. He ran away with this one. That's Almost good. the wide receiver of the year, but I think I think this is the better place for him is, you know, the second place wide receiver voting and the the actual breakout player of the year cuz he he came and he saw <laughs> yes, he and, and he scored multiple touchdowns in 1400 yards. 1400 yards. 14. So if you are keeping a player, you'd rather keep Al, keeping him for next year, Allen Robinson or Brandon Marshall? Allen Robinson. Ooh. Oh, man. It, that's really tough. If it's just a one-off, right. say I'm playing just for, for next, next year. Just Brandon Marshall year. had the better year this year than Allen Robinson. By, by a, a, a squeaker. Slim. Very close. I'll Was go. it 80, 80 catches for Allen Robinson, 1,400 yards, Brandon, Brandon 14 Marshall was, touchdowns. Marshall was 109 catches. 1,502 yards, 14 touchdowns. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty good oh, year. Oh, that, that is a heck of a year. A little I'm, more consistent, too. And yes. I, I need to know if if uh, Fitzpatrick is going to be throwing sure. the ball. Sure, all, all same situations that so you have now. i got to make the decision today. I'm going to go with Allen Robinson because I know what's going to happen next year. I'm not sure with Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's very, I, I bring those two names up because of where they finish so close and the fact that they both have premium wide receiver twos on the other side with Eric Decker and Alan Hearns that really it showed. Helps. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but Alan Robinson, well-deserved breakout player of the year. Our next category in the 2015 footies, the rookie of the year and the nominees are David Johnson, TJ Yeldon, Todd Gurley, Amari Cooper, Thomas Rawls, and Buck Allen. And the winner <laughs> I, I just saw, did Buck uh, to spoil the, two votes. the loser. The Buck two Allen votes got two for Buck Allen. votes. <laughs> yeah. Two votes. Come on. Uh, the winner for rookie of the year, the running back sensation for the St. Louis Rams, Todd Gurley. Hey, Todd Gurley. Well deserved. Very well deserved. Well deserved. It was a, a monster year for Gurley. 229 carries, over 1,100 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Yes. Very uh, impressive year. Number two was David Johnson. Yes. And, and Todd Gurley. Those were the only ones that were games. even close, by the way. You could have uh, Yeldon, Cooper, Rawls, Allen didn't do much. In the yeah. vo- in Amari, the Amari Cooper is very interesting because I, I would say at about halfway through the year, we thought this guy is wow. really breaking out. And Instead, he broke. Can and, be a stud, he, which he broke it, down. absolutely can still be a an elite fantasy wide receiver, but I just thought it was – an interesting thing about if you would have taken a poll halfway through the year, 
people were in love with Amari Cooper. Well, yeah, Marks Mariota could have been on that list, d- depending on Marks, <laughs> Marcus. That's just he got it Marks. right. You heard it wrong. Yeah, Thank you heard you. it wrong, folks. I'm gonna Marks I'm, next Mariota. year. <laughs> next year, I'm telling you this. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back and have the best English imaginable. Would you be the comeback host of the year? Yes, I would. Just like this next category, the comeback player of the year. Which fantasy player amazed you the most with their return to relevance? You had several players who had done it before and kind of seemed like they were done and came back, such as Andy Dalton, Mm -hmm. Brandon Marshall, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Doug Martin really came back strong, Jonathan Stewart, and Larry Fitzgerald, guys who had done it, gone away, and a fine, came back. A fine group of nominees. A fine, fine group of nominees. I really thought that this award was going to go to who got the runner-up in Doug Martin, just Ooh. because he is, I mean, he was hot and went, disappeared and came back strong. But the winner of this year's award was the aforementioned Brandon Marshall. I love it. I mean, he had such a good year. It's amazing. He came back. You just heard it. 109, 1514. That's ridiculous. That's going to, you know what that gets you? That gets you a footy. That gets you a footy. (laughs) The comeback player of the year. And Doug Martin was second. Third was Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah. And then Larry Fitzgerald and Jonathan Stewart and Andy Dalton. Ryan Fitzpatrick. He had a couple good years there in in Buffalo. Yeah. So is it, uh, is it up to me? It is to the hostess. All right. Well, the the next. <laughs> wait a minute. I said next to my English. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's going to take more effort than to separate hostess from your vocabulary. Yeah, Steel. especially with all the uh, the, the Twinkies and the, oh, I know. And the Ding Dongs. I know. Whew. And the Ho Hos. Do we have any of those around here? <laughs> you go uh, look around. I'm going to give this footy out. The steal of the draft. Which player was the absolute best value? in the 2015 draft compared to their ADP, their average draft position. A number of nominees. I'm going to give you the nominee and where they were drafted, their average draft position, and we'll find out who wins this footy. The first nominee, Doug Martin with an average draft position of 74. Allen Robinson with an ADP of 83. Brandon Marshall, where I actually don't have his ADP up here. 59. Larry Fitzgerald. 92. Chris Ivory was 67. 67. Darren McFadden? 108. Cam Newton? 84. And Eric Decker? 101. 101. 101. And this was uh, this was a very close vote. The second and third place votes were basic, are, are an actual tie, and that was Cam Newton and Eric Decker Ooh. tied for the steal of the draft, second and third place. But the winner, you've heard his name before, Allen Robinson He's got with an two ADP. Feet and he needs two footies. <laughs> He's got two feet. He needs two footies. ADP of 83, Allen Robinson. What more can you say about the guy? The, we can say this. He will not have cold feet. No. When he's wearing his plush golden footies. Hey, you know Congratulations. What I, you know what I think we need to hear? A little bit of that uh, preseason target monster. Oh! <laughs> there he was. Uh, we went back and saw he, <laughs> here. Here's he was, my antacids. <laughs> uh, preseason, he was Mike's uh, in our my guy segment. Segment. Yes, he was Mike's my guy before the year. All right, so we got one more. Only one more footy to give out. One oh, is this more. me? Yep, this is me. One final footy. This this one what is a actually, terrible one to end on. <laughs> no, this, it, this is great because it's me reading it as a few of these guys may have been hyped by me. So the let down player of the year and just the con- let down host of the year. <laughs> just just concentrate on that Allen Robinson pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you win some, you lose some. But this player just playing never delivered on the fantasy hype. And the nominees Amir Abdullah, Joseph Randall, Travis Kelsey, Melvin Gordon, Jordan Matthews, Andre Johnson, Jeremy Hill. Ryan Tannehill and Devontae Adams. The winner of the letdown player the, of the loser. The, <laughs> the de- l- it depends on your point of view. He's going to win a footy. <laughs> the winner slash right. loser, the letdown player of the year, Jeremy Hill. 
And it this, was close. This one was very close with Devontae. He stinks, stinks Adams. Uh, and Melvin Gordon, very close. And this one's a little tough because it's I I agree though because it's the letdown of the year. There was very very high hopes for Jeremy Hill, uh, and he did not come through with those high hopes. He still was a a running back to uh, one of those really frustrating guys who can get you four points or can get you twenty. So um, you but but the expectation was that he would be great. He would be great, and we looked at this when we were talking about this category and saw that Jeremy Hill, same amount of carries as last year. One different carry, right? So 222 last year, yeah. 223 this year. Uh, I believe 1,100 plus yards last year and what, 700 and something this yeah, year? Yeah, it's about a 300-yard difference. Yeah, yeah and the, the real That's a problem, letdown. The real problem for Jeremy Hill, because I wanted to contest this a little bit in the sense that Jeremy Hill finished the year as the 15th best running back. Uh, but here's, 15 or 19? Because I thought fif- you said 19. 15 now after, after week 17. So the 15th best running back, but the problem that you had with him is is he would put up 20 points and then put up one point, three points, 24 points, three points. And he went back and forth. It was kind of like what we were talking about with Eddie Lacy. This is a guy that if you owned him, frustrated you like crazy because you would have had to have had a time machine to get <laughs> the the right picks on when he was going to have a good game and when he was going to stink. He was a best ball uh, champion. Yes. If you had him in your that's best a, balls, that's a great NFLs, point. then you are very happy with Jeremy. I was going to say, he's probably not one of the guys that were on a lot of championship rosters. I can't Because imagine. you couldn't lean on him at any time. You could roll him out there as a flyer, but that's what he became as opposed to the top round type of guy that we hoped and expected him to be. So yeah, you didn't get to the playoffs because he lost you weeks because you right. accidentally played him. That's right. <laughs> So, so that does you. it. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Thank you all the, to all the beautiful voters out there for doing your job and your duty and placing your votes for the footies of the year. Do we need to run them back? No. Yeah, I think we, we, I got, think we got enough. Got. We'll post them on this episode <laughs> so you can see the winners. There you no, go. No. you got to listen to the episode. We'll post them later. All right. Next week. All right. It's, you know. It's a real fine production we have here. <laughs> well, don't forget, we st- don't worry, listeners. We still have more this episode for you. Coming up br- very soon after this commercial break. <laughs> Chris Meany of the Fantasy Sports Network with our FanDuel DFS picks for the playoffs. You mistimed that horrifically. All right. All right, it's over. <laughs> can, we, can we bring in Chris? Yep. Yeah, we can bring in Chris. You talking to me? The Fantasy Footballers are joined once again by Chris Meany of the Fantasy Sports Network. It's been a couple weeks. We had some scheduling conflicts, but we are, we are very pleased to bring back a man who drops more life lessons than Mr. Feeney. And that is Chris Meany. What's going on, man? I don't know if you know that reference. <laughs> yes, I do. What? Uh, Boy Meets World? That is a Boy Meets World reference. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, boy, I know that. Uh, that's, the show still comes on TV uh, now and then. And when I'm up late at night, I flick it on. Uh, Why not? 50% of my moral standing came from Boy Meets World. So <laughs> hopefully they didn't lead me astray. So let's talk some DFS. We got the playoffs. So... Uh, for for those who have never done a playoff DFS matchup, is there anything that's vastly different from going into something like this week as compared to the regular season? Well, the biggest thing, guys, is obviously there's only four games, right? There's only you know eight quarterbacks to choose from, uh, you know, a handful of running backs. So it's hard when you know when you're in big long contests. So you know when you have the full slate of games, uh, it's easy to be a little bit different. Um, so here. I mean, you're probably going to be in contests where you have, you know, highly owned guys if you're going in head-to-heads and, and 50-50s and whatnot. In tournament plays, I guess maybe you try to be a little bit contrary and you try to fade guys. Uh, but that's the really the only big difference is I think you just have to try to play who you think and you don't try to get too cute. You just go out there and you, and you play the people that you think are just going to be good. All right, so who are you targeting from the quarterback arena? 
Uh, the quarterback position, uh, you know what? I'm going to fade Big Ben this week. Uh, you know, twice this year I thought that Pittsburgh and Cincinnati would be in shootouts. I know the first time Pittsburgh played Cincy, Big Ben was coming off an injury. Uh, and I guess the second time it was Andy Dalton who got hurt. And it doesn't really was, wasn't the shootout that we all thought. And really, Big Ben has 21 Fanduel points and two starts against Cincy. So I'm going to try to stay away from him. I like Kirk Cousins. <laughs> I like him a lot. Um, it's funny to say, but I mean, you know, ever since they got Deshaun Jackson back, I believe they're six and three. Ever since that, you like that quote, they're seven and three. If Kirk Cousins is much better quarterback at home, uh, and you know what, there's only two quarterbacks been better than him over the past four weeks, and, and Russell Wilson's one of them who's also going. Another guy that I'm considering as well. Uh, so just those two guys I'm considering. I like Kirk Cousins because I just like the options. The offense is rolling right now. I mean, he's been great. Uh, highest completion percentage in the NFL. He's got Jordan Reed, who I think is a must play at the tight end position this week. Uh, you just consider him like a wide receiver in my, in my opinion. So I like him and I like Jordan Reed. Um, and I'm also, like I said, I'm also Wilson, willing to go Russell Wilson. This is kind of where it all started from him. Uh, when he played Minnesota in Minnesota, he had 34 Fanduel points, followed up with 32, 26, 20, and then 21. He's just been lights out. I like that connection with Doug Baldwin, but I think my play really is Kirk Cousins. And a lot of talk around the office is that, oh well, you know, everyone's leaning Cousins. I'm going to go Rodgers. Well, again, you don't need to go too cute. You don't need to try to be too contrarian. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I believe his yards per play is like 30th in the NFL per throw. Like he just. It hasn't been good for Aaron Rodgers. He's he's just not been great. Blaine Gabbert has been better than him over the past six, oh. seven weeks. Oh. It's not. Those it's are crazy. Fighting words, I know. Chris. I know, but but I mean, it's not all on Rodgers. Obviously, Rodgers is a stud. The offensive line is not helping him out. He has no time to throw the ball. Um, you know what? James Jones seems to be the only one catching the ball there. Uh, Devontae Adams is not the guy many people thought he was, and you know uh, Randall Cobb is not not getting time open in space. It's just not working out. So. I like the Washington play. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I, I tend to agree with the uh, the philosophy of, of that'll be the highest-scoring game of the week. So what are you doing with uh, running backs? What are you, do you have any thoughts on, uh, like, are you, are you taking the gamble on Marshawn? If, if I, he's back, is he a full play for you? Yeah, you know what? I think, I, I think in, a, in a head-to-head or a cash, I have issues starting Lynch um, because of the uncertainty. But, you know, Lynch, everyone knows this. This guy probably could have played the past couple weeks, but they didn't really need him to. And would anybody be shocked if he came into this football game and he had 15, 20 carries and he was just a beast? I uh, wouldn't be shocked with that. But, again, some uncertainty with him. And even for, throughout the, all the running backs, is, this is the week where you want to pay up for the pass catchers. You want to get those wide receivers. Antonio Brown, I mentioned fading Ben, but it's still – they're probably going to throw the ball a lot if there's no D'Angelo Williams. So Antonio Brown there is, is a nice play. $9,500 is going to really put a staple, uh, a dent into your cash. Uh, but for running backs, you can really not – you can spend down on these guys. Adrian Peterson, he hasn't had a game really since the Atlanta Falcons in, in November. You know, one time earlier when he played Seattle, Chancer just stacked the box. Like, he had eight carries. He did nothing in that game. So I, I – I don't expect him to have a good game this time around either. It's going to be tough for him. You go down the list, like I mentioned, D'Angelo Williams, probably not going to play as of Wednesday in a walking boot. Still, Marshawn Lynch, you mentioned him, hard to trust. Jeremy Hill, Pittsburgh's D's actually been pretty good. I like Gio a little bit better than him. I think if I'm going to go back, so I like Charkandrick West. Uh, I'd like him maybe hopefully he gets back to getting those 15 to 20 touches he got before he got hurt. I think they were just kind of easing it off a little bit. But, again, Spencer Ware is going to be sprinkled into this game. I think Eddie Lacy might be an okay play, but, again, another question mark. But of all the teams that are going, Washington is by far the worst against the run. I believe they're like 12th worst against the run, and everybody else is, you know, not too bad. I mean, if you're that bad against the run, you most likely don't make the playoffs. So Eddie Lacy could be an okay, okay play in that. So I'm going to go West and Lacy. I'm just going to spend up on other positions, wide receivers. Gio Bernard is actually not too bad either. You can catch some balls, get point five for a reception, so that's okay. All right, how about how about this for a contrarian play? Let's say D'Angelo Williams sits as we he's uh as of the last I'd heard, he's still in a walking boot. Fitz, yeah. Fitzgerald Toussaint. Are are you is are you willing at all to throw him into the uh into your DFS lineup? I am. We saw him get twelve carries against Cleveland, only at twenty four yards, but the volume is there. So I think he could be a good play again. Uh, when I'm playing in, in cash, with, in smaller contests, 50-50s, I want to try to play somebody safe, somebody I feel like is going to get a lot of play and going to be okay. 
So I don't know if Fitzgerald will be that guy, but as certainly in a big tournament play, I'm definitely willing to, uh, to roll the dice on him. I mean, why not? And we saw uh, against Cincinnati, the two, good, two games against Cincinnati, D'Angelo Williams had really, really good games. They were able to run the ball against him. So uh, he could be a sneaky little play. All right, so the defense that you're going with this week, let me hear it. It's Kansas City. Oh. I love Seattle, too. I do like Seattle, but I honestly think Seattle is going to be, be like heavily, heavily owned. So I want to try to be a little bit different there. I know Seattle, when they played Minnesota, they had 13 Fandle points, and I believe Bridgewater may have had two two fantasy points against him. So he really, really struggled. So I, I can understand why there. But, I mean, the Chiefs have just been so consistent. Like, just list off the Fandle points from 16-8. 21, 14, 17, had the down week, surprisingly, against the Bills, only had five. But before that, 20, 19, 14, 12. These guys have had double-digit fantasy points in, like, seven of the last ten games. So uh, I like them a lot, and I just – I'm not buying into Houston. I'm just really not buying into that whole situation. I, I just – the Chiefs have been making plays, so I'm willing to roll them out. But if you want to go a little bit cheaper, uh, I'm in a contest right now where I have the Steelers D in there at $4,500. So I – it's just a little bit of a cheap play. I just really wanted to spend up on Brown, Baldwin, and Macklin. I, I like those three wide receivers the most this week. All right, and the last question, Meanie, who are your Super Bowl teams and who is the Super Bowl winner? Oh, wow, yeah, it's tough, eh? Uh, <laughs> I like – it's tough. It really is tough. Honestly, I'm going to go <laughs> – I'm going to go with the Steelers, man. I really think the Steelers are going to get it done. I, I, I like them a lot. The AFC is really a crapshoot to me. It honestly is. Casey, I'm not buying in Houston. I I had all my money on New England around week six, and ever since I did that, all guys are dropping like flies. The offensive line is not great, um, but it is a positive that New England will not play Pittsburgh. If it works out that way, Pittsburgh traveled to Denver. So I like the Steelers. I like that offense. I think they can make things happen, but everybody in the AFC is pretty flawed. And you know what? I'm rolling the Seahawks out there. I think a third straight year of them going back. Um, I, I know Arizona wasn't really playing for anything last week, but I think it was a really just from a confidence standpoint for Seattle to go into Arizona and lay the beat down on them. And they've just been playing fantastic football, you know, ever since Jimmy Graham went down, which is a little bit of a surprise, but ever since he went down, uh, they've been really good. But I mean, listen, Carolina, Arizona, Seattle, I think all those teams are better than anybody in the AFC right now. Uh, certainly Carolina, it's hard to count them out. All they got to do is win two home games and they're right there. Uh, but I like I like Seattle. I think it's going to be the Seahawks that go again. All right, we really appreciate the time. Good, good friend of the show, Chris Meany from the Fantasy Sports Network, and we'll we'll try and catch up with you uh, again next week, Chris. Yeah, guys, it's been it's been awesome. Thanks so much. Maybe one little sneaky play at tight end, yeah. Heath Miller. If you don't oh. want to spend on Jordan Reed, I just noticed that uh, I know the Bengals only gave one touchdown to tight ends this year. But in two games, Heath Miller has 20 catches against the Bengals this year. So just a sneaky little play at 10 in each game. That's a hot uh, take, Chris. Very nice. That's hot. That's a hot it take. It could work out. Who knows? Uh, good luck to everybody, and thanks so much, guys, for having right. me on. Yeah, thanks, Chris. All right, cheers. As always, amazing, great insight from our friend, our dearest friend, Chris Meany, who drops DFS uh, nuggets of knowledge almost every week on the show. We love it. It's been great all year long. We've heard nothing but amazing feedback. So uh, we keep bringing him back. Maybe Heath Miller will be the Gary Barnage that he brought to oh, our man. attention after week one. That's what I'm saying. You get you get Gary Barnage right before the breakout. You get on the show. It's every a beautiful week. thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, nobody knew that name. Yeah, and then they did. He won some people some cash. So well, his, I, like his mom forgot. <laughs> right like larry larry barnage get oh, over here oh yeah gary yeah that's what it was all right yeah. hey let me ask you guys this before we get uh before we close the show out i do want to uh mention a couple things one if you're a listener out there you've enjoyed the show this year there's some ways that you can help us out you can go onto the website the fantasy uh you can submit questions to us on there you can also uh connect with us Basically, you can contact us. You can uh, check out the show page on iTunes, on SoundCloud, everywhere else that you can listen to us. Make sure you subscribe to those. We're going to be here all off season. Check out jointhefoot.com, our fantasy football community. That's going on all off season. We're going to be improving that for our listeners. We also we have, have an uh, extra an show. Yeah, I was going to say we have another mailbag show coming out today for our Foot Clan listeners over at Join the Foot. So that is more work to be done. Right. That is absolutely right. And uh, make sure you leave us reviews on iTunes. That helps as well. I do want to get your guys' thoughts on the playoff matchups. Simply, I want who do you think is going to win these games? I, I want to know. I want it on record. 
I want it recorded. We're going against right. the spread or just winners? We'll just pick winners. All right. we'll, we'll just pick winners. I'm going to go with Washington taking the game over Green Bay. An interesting thing uh, with the spreads of all four games. Washington, uh, they, they opened as the favorite. It has, it has switched. All four road teams are favored. Wow. Which is ridiculous. Not all four teams on the road are going to win this week. And the I was I've told these guys, Washington reminds me very much of the 2008 Cardinals. It's a team that you didn't find very special. They started heating up in the second half of the year. They were very bad on the road, but they were great at home. 2008 Cardinals. I'm taking Washington as well. So I believe Washington's going to win. I have a water bet with you guys on this because I'm going to take the team with the better record against better opponents with the better quarterback, and that would be the Green Bay Packers. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, let's go ahead and grab the other NFC game then. The Seahawks head to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Seahawks have Marshawn Lynch back. The Vikings are fresh off a division title. They play well at home, good defense. However, they are not favored in this game. Seattle's playing well. So who do you have in this one, Mike? I'm still going to go with Seattle as they are my my Super Bowl pick we were talking about on Tuesday's show. Uh, I, it, but this I think this is going to be a, a tougher matchup for Seattle. Uh, and as, as crazy and maybe as strange as this sounds, because if they lose, they're out of the playoffs. Yeah, but if Seattle wins this game, then I'm very confident that they will make it to the Super Bowl. I'm going to take Seattle on this matchup. Very close game, I agree. Yeah, very close. I picked Minnesota against the spread, but so I do think five, Seattle five points. Yeah, spread. I do think Seattle squeaks out a close victory, and I will take them as well. All right, AFC picks. Uh, Pittsburgh goes to Cincinnati and takes on the Bengals. I'm going to start this one off. I'm actually going to take Cincinnati. Whoa! I thought I was going to be the. I was. I was going to be on an island here, but I am absolutely taking Cincinnati. I think without D'Angelo Williams, without uh, the home Le'Veon field Bell, advantage on the road, Big Ben hasn't been good on the road, and the fact that Andy Dalton is gone is going to play into <laughs> so it's going to play into a game flow that makes this an ugly defensive home field cold weather game. That's We've talked what, about Big Ben on the road. That's what I think is going to happen, and, and I'm, I'm going, going to go with the Steelers because I believe for the Bengals to win, they will have to make zero mistakes i think the steelers because of their offense they can make a few they can have a couple fumbles or interceptions and overcome that by scoring uh more points where the Bengals just can't do that all right the last matchup kansas city goes to houston to take on the texans kansas city's favorite in this game yeah i'm taking kansas city i'm gonna go with kansas city as well um if I, a couple quick notes alex smith does have some playoff experience which I believe in that. I believe that helps a player out. And Houston has lost their Pro Bowl left tackle to the IR. I believe he had a quad injury. And the Chiefs are expecting Houston back into their lineup to help them destroy the Houston Texans. So I just think it'll be too much. I'll go with the Chiefs. I agree. This was one of those that I picked to cover their favorite uh, line. I think the Chiefs win this one pretty easily. All right, that does it for today's show. Hope you enjoyed the footies, all the news. We'll be back next Tuesday. We'll know the results of these games, and uh, we'll find out the matchups for next week. It's going to be fun. Yeah, reminder, Tuesday, Thursday. Yeah, check out the playoff challenge. We'll tweet it. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.